Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for everybody uh, being here. Appreciate uh, appreciate all the support and attention. Um, you know, and the and the team does as well. They're they're thrilled with with where we're at and the work that they put in. And uh, you know, we just are going to keep grinding along. It's yeah, been an exciting start not only for us but the uh, entire athletic department. Um, certainly. Our American football team, you know how I like to use football for our team, but uh, American football team uh, 4-0 as well. I'm told uh, we're on one of only three schools in the country um, that are undefeated in both uh, American football and uh, our football. Um, so that's uh, really exciting. We've we've both had some uh, heart-stopping games as well uh, and just have uh, figured out way, ways to win. So very exciting for um you know, uh, both programs and just the athletic department also like to put a little plug uh, for our team. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, our, our mission here. Um, and really my mission here is just to prepare them for life after college. And obviously I want to win a lot of games and everyone knows my goals and where I want to go. But, you know, my, my ultimate job is is to make sure they're, they're good husbands, good fathers, good members of their community and, um, you know, you know, that's, that's a big part of our mission today. And obviously the academic side of that, we are honored with the United Soccer Coaches Team Academic Award uh, with a 3.23 uh, team GPA. So very excited to see our guys. Um, you know, that's one of our goals uh, off the field. So very excited to see our guys accomplish that as well. Thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll start with Danny. Hello, Coach Juan Daniel Avila from the Daily Aztec here. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for uh, asking. I'm going to start right away with the first question. Uh, Coach, you, you have been mentioning that the team has a big advantage here at home, but this week you guys travel up to Seattle. Do you think that will have any effect on the team's performance in terms of style of play? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so in style of play, you know, we're, you know, I think we're, we're at a place where, um, you know, we're really not going to change, you know, what we do for, for our opponents. Always it's about, you know, us first and foremost, and then, you know, you obviously have to make some, some tactical tweaks, but yeah, in terms of how we're going to approach the game, we're going to stick to our, you know, our principles, attacking and defending. And, um, you know, we, we feel pretty strongly about, you know, where we're at, you know, with everything on, on that side of it. Obviously, it's it's a massive, massive uh, game. It's a, you know, massive opponent. Um, but, you know, we feel we're, we're very ready and very prepared uh, to take on this challenge. Yeah, of course, uh, just saying, uh, going back off the ranks, uh, how confident has a team felt now that they are number 14 going up against uh, Washington that they're also undefeated? Yeah, it's it's interesting. We, we spoke actually about this on uh, Friday before the game uh, with the guys. And I said, listen, like, you have to understand teams are playing against your rank as well. And there's a psychological advantage uh, to having that number, you know, in, in front of your name. And I think it can go two ways. If you guys, you know, come out and step on team's throats right away, um, you know, you're going to make those seeds uh, of doubt grow and, um, you know, get off to obviously good starts and, and hopefully put games away right away. So I think from that perspective, I think for this game, it's just an exciting time, you know, for the Pac-12. I think it's an exciting time for our department, um, you know, in, in San Diego State as, as a whole to, you know, hopefully have a, a two top 10 teams, you know, go into battle on the Pac-12 network. Of course. And uh, so we've talked about the process uh, of this team and uh, of you getting into that final four position. But do you expect this young team to be where they are now this soon in the season? Uh, we are well ahead of the curve of where I thought we would be. Uh, to be honest, I... I thought it would be uh, next year. You know, not many people know. We only really have two seniors that play. Um, I would say 90% of the guys that play have three year, three or four years of eligibility left. So, you know, it's a very, very young team. I, you know, I laugh and joke with them all the time that we're going to grow old together. They better get used to my dad jokes because they're going to have to deal with them for the next three or four years. Um, and, you know, we're just going to continue to – to put our work in and, and continue to, to grow together, like I said. Yeah, saying you're uh, on top of the curve, what do, you t what do you tell them to keep them motivated, to keep them going and, and feeling strong about uh, their performances that they put in week in, week out? 
Yeah, I, th- I think now I don't have to say much. You know, I, I think they know the the stakes. You know, especially when you get into these Pac-12 games. Honestly, it, it you know there was a lot more motivation and a lot more, um, you know, things that you had to do for for some of the non-conference opponents. And certainly, we have one left that's a big, you know, crosstown derby. So we'll we'll deal with that when we get there. But yeah, I think now they they know the stakes. They know we've put ourselves in a great position. Um, you know, we love where we're at in the, in the rankings. We love where we're at in the RPI. Um, so we just, uh, I, I think that's that's really all it takes is, is they understand the road, you know, to get to the NCAA tournament and advance in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, they understand these are all, you know, steps along that path. All right, thanks, Coach. Danny. We'll go to Troy. Coach, congrats on the early season success. I'm wondering how much uh, pride your team takes in the fact that you've shut out so many opponents and how – um, how much they want to keep that shutout uh, kind of run going, uh, especially against Washington and future opponents as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the number one thing. You know, we have our, our KPIs, you know, listed in our locker room, you know, which are our key performance indicators, you know, and, and the result and, and the clean sheet are, are the first two on that list. And it's something, you know, we, we talk about constantly. And the, and the great thing, I've I've mentioned this a ton, almost probably in every interview that I've done, and it's it's not just the back line and the goalkeepers, you know, it's it's an entire it's an entire group effort. You know, we, we rely on our attacking players to do a lot of, you know, the early defensive work, so, you know, similar to a full court press in basketball. Um, you know, and then obviously we have the midfielders and defenders and a fantastic goalkeeper, you know, behind to, to do clean up the rest of it. So, yeah, it's something they talk about all the time. It's like the first thing I mentioned, you know, if you can hear us cheering immediately after the game, we talk about usually three or four things we check off off our KPI list and, you know, clean sheets always, you know, always one of those things. So it's, you know, everywhere I've been, you know, I've been fortunate to be at some really great programs and that's always been a big, a big focus of, you know, success that I've had. And, you know, I'm glad that our guys have really taken to it and, um, you know, and also seeing the success from it. And with, with San Diego, with the talents that here and the, you know, the year round growing season and that sort of thing, it seems like San Diego State should be in this position annually, uh, if not even ranked higher. W- would you agree? And is that is that basically your goal going forward? Um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to. Uh, I got to keep the expectations a little low so I can over deliver on some of those. But yeah, I mean that, that's why I came here. You know, I I left. Uh, you know, I was at the University of Virginia, and yeah, I was as an assistant, but it was a job I loved and a place I loved and success that that we were having so it it took um yeah somewhere special in my opinion this was kind of a dream job for me being you know i grew up in huntington beach i went to college in irvine so you know california is a place you know that's near and dear to my heart so i think it's not only san diego i'm just really proud of the state and i want to put a good representation out on the field for the state of california that's something that's you know really important to me and we have a lot of california players it's also something's really important to me so yeah that's that's my goal you know i I talked about it last week and you know i won't change you know i want to be in a final four I, i think we have the ability we have a lot of things in place here from a supportive administration fantastic new stadium coming in uh fertile recruiting ground amazing academics at the school beautiful place to live you know it's uh, our our international guys they laugh all the time they're like coach you you undersold us on this paradise um so i i I think all those things considered um you know that that's my goal is to keep us in that conversation for a long time coming well i hate to break it to you but you set the bar pretty high right now so (laughs) (laughs) congratulations on your success so far thanks for the time thank you i appreciate it thanks troy Uh, we'll go to mark Hey, Coach, um, you talk about Jacob and, and how you got him from Washington. What was the situation up there? Was he just not playing? How did you know about him, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, Jacob's actually got a pretty crazy story. Um, Jacob's only played, you know, high, high-level soccer for about two and a half years. Uh, you know, he was actually a pretty pretty good football player, wide receiver, um, had some opportunities, Washington State, Um Please don't let Brady see this. I don't need him to try and get Jacob to pull double duty on the football team. But um, 
And uh, but soccer was always his first passion, and you know he kind of was just playing on like a lower level club team there, and um, kind of splitting time on the field. And you know Seattle Sounders actually spotted him in a park, um, and they said, "Hey, come over and train with us for a year, um, you know, and see and see what you know, see where you end up." And within a year, he was playing in USL Championship games, which is obviously you know one step below the MLS, and then you know went to Washington and. You know, quite frankly, was was sitting behind, um, you know, a very, very good goalkeeper there uh, in Sam Fowler, um, you know, who Washington loved. He just had a little bit more experience than Jacob. And, you know, Jamie Clark and I are are actually quite close. And, you know, we spoke after the season and I I was so impressed by Jamie Clark um, in that moment, you know, to say, hey, this is what's best for the kid. Like, Jacob wants to play, you know, we think Sam is a, is, is our starter. Um, and we don't want to keep Jacob here. And I I was so impressed by, you know, Jamie in that moment to do, it's probably going to hurt. It hurts him competitively without a doubt. And he even said that to me. Um, but I was so impressed by the character of Jamie, uh, to do what's best for the kids. And that's why ultimately all of us, you know, are in this game as college coaches is, is to do what's best for the kids and, and help them reach their dreams. And so I give a lot of Clark, a lot of credit to Jamie Clark, um, you know, for, for that moment. Um, you know, and then Jacob and I just hit it off really, really well. You know, he was actually our first, uh, visit once recruiting opened back up. I got him right on campus, I think June 2nd. Um, and we just hit it off really well. I was obviously a former goalkeeper, so there's this, you know, probably a little bit of a different relationship, you know, that him and I will have, um, and him and I do have. Um, and I, I, I just think he always wanted to be in California. He had a good friend, uh, our left center back, Elias Katsaros, grew up playing together for the Seattle Sounders in the Washington area. So, you know, that certainly helped give him some insights on, you know, what we were growing and, um, you know, how he could come be a part of it and. Uh, We are just so thrilled, so thrilled to have him outside of all the soccer stuff. I mean, he is an amazing, amazing human being. And yeah, we're just, we're so thrilled he's with us. And um, when you started recruiting him, um, I'm assuming the Pac-12 rule about intra-conference transfers had not yet gone through. I think it went through in May. Yep. Was the original thought that he was going to have to sit out this year? And then, you know, how, how serendipitous was it that, that passes and he comes in his visit and he can play right away. No, really, that that's how quick the recruiting process was. It wasn't until after the the Pac-12 passed the rule, um, you know, that we started it. And that's what, like, a lot of people are funny with this team. You know, we had, um, you know, mm-hmm. this season ended in, what, late April, I believe. You know, and a lot of these guys, we had Alex Yelmhoff signed early earlier. But, you know, a lot of these guys came in, in May, you know, today, who's been a mainstay on the back line. Um, you know, Rick, who I think is going to be a very, very good player, um, you know, down the road for us. So a lot of those guys, you know, all came in like May, Jacob as well. So we put together the, you know, the team pretty late, you know, Henry Smith Hasty as well from SMU. So, you know, we put the team together pretty late. So, um, yeah, and to be honest, you know, in the recruiting process, I told Jacob we we had a very good goalkeeper in, in Tetsuya Kadona, and you know played ten games uh, for us last year in the Pac-12 and, and did pretty well. You know, and I told Jacob in the recruiting process, you're just coming to compete with with Ted, and um, you know credit to Jacob. Um, you know he wasn't turned away by that competition and, and has come and done well. And uh, the probably the one of the coolest part and probably shows you know not only Jacob, but also Ted is they actually live together. Um, they're best friend, you know, they're really, really good friends. The last person Jacob fist bumps before he goes on the field is Ted. And it's so cool to just see the maturity and the relationship that they have, you know, which could be, you know, a challenging relationship for sure. But it, it's awesome to see them put, you know, all that aside for the betterment of the team and, you know, the betterment of their relationship. And I think they'll be lifelong friends for it. Last thing, do you think it would have been a deterrent for him coming to San Diego State if he would have had to sit out a year? Did he really want to play right away? Yeah, he wanted to play right away. To be honest, pretty much everybody in the Pac-12 was recruiting him. Um, And, you know, we, you know, I think probably a couple of the other schools, you know, had like a senior goalkeeper that they weren't really willing to, you know, kind of overlook. And, um, you know, our situation was just, you know, felt like more of an open competition. Um, and, you know, credit credit to him that, you know, he, he thought he could come in and, and win it, and he's put in the work to, to do that. So, um, yeah, I think maybe if that, that rule hadn't changed, 
um, you know, maybe would have, would have changed his, his thoughts a little bit, but, you know, fortunate for us, um, you know, that, that it did. And again, we're, we're just thrilled he's here with us. Great. Thanks a lot. Of course. Thanks, Thanks for the, Martin. we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with, uh, Derek. Hey coach. Um, I, I just looked it up and there has not been an uh, undefeated national champion since 1989 with Santa Clara. So odds are, although I hope it doesn't happen, you're going to drop a match at some point. Yep. How do you handle that when you got a team that is so successful and rolling the way it is? When you first get that little bit of, of maybe they're, maybe maybe we're not just going to roll over everybody. Are you are you prepared to handle that? Have you been thinking about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and we talk to our guys all about all the time about adversity. You know, and there's been, I think the great thing you know with this group is we have faced a lot of adversity. Um, you know, throughout, and we've just figured out a way to win, um, you know, with, with some, with some, certainly some crazy games. So, you know, it's, it's something I remind them, you know, about every game. I think every 90 minute game, you know, soccer is a pretty crazy sport. You know, there's, uh, you know, the scoring is so low there. There's always these little moments of adversity, little plays here and there where the kind of the tide is turning. So I think it's something we've had to deal with every game and we've just figured out, you know, a way to win. But I think with our group, um, you know, we just try and play 45 minutes at a time. That's really one of our goals this year. And, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit with Ben on Friday after our game. You know, we talk even smaller than that is like critical moments. And that's, you know, a big KPI for us. You know, and that's really the first five minutes of each half, the last five minutes of each half, and then five minutes um, either scoring or conceding a goal. And, you know, we just try and we just try and go – you know, just keep grinding out these 45 minutes, these small critical moments. And, you know, we just feel like we're going to be in a really, really good place no, no matter what happens. And, you know, we have a little saying is, you know, life by the inch is a cinch and life by the art is hard. And, you know, we're just going to when things go wrong, uh, you know, and if we do lose a game, you know, we'll just pick ourselves back up and we'll get ready for the next one. To use a baseball analogy, you usually say if a pitcher doesn't have his best stuff, he still finds a way to win. That's a really good picture. How many of these matches have you won without your best stuff? And have you seen the best version of SDSU yet? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I would say, honestly, um, our best game we probably tied was LMU away. Uh, that I think from a performance of attacking and what we wanted to do with the ball, how we executed, you know, the game plan. We just couldn't find a way to score and credit to LMU. You know, they're one of the best teams in the country. I think they're number five or number six in the country as well, where the our tie is their only blemish, you know, on their record as well. And I thought that was honestly our best game and which was a zero zero result. So I tell the guys all the time, I just say, you know, I was frustrated after the Bakersfield game um, when I didn't feel like we went about our process the right way. I didn't think our performance was good enough. And, you know, I, I gave it to the guys pretty good um, after that. And I think, you know, it's a it's a, gr a group that, you know, I was really impressed with how they took that because sometimes people can say, oh, coach is just getting honest. We won. You know, what's the problem? And I think our group has done a really good job of, even in winning, uh, of finding things that we can improve upon. And, you know, it was uh, it was hilarious. We had our, you know, we have our pregame walkthrough on Friday. And uh, I showed him two little clips, um, you know, just of things that I wanted, you know, could be little tweaks that we could use. One was from Seattle Sounders in the Nations League final. They scored on a little backdoor play. Um, and literally that's how we got our goal against Gonzaga. So this group is so, so coachable. Um, you know, they're so for being young so mature um and I, I just think you know we just got to keep going um you know in, in the direction we started